everyone, it's me, Teacher Jean. And in this lesson, you will learn about illustrating triangle congruence. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to first define and illustrate the idea of congruence in real life. Second, state and apply the properties of congruence in congruent parts and congruent triangles. And for the last, illustrate triangle congruence. Now, closely look and study the wings of the butterfly and answer the following questions. Are the pair of wings of the butterfly congruent? If yes, explain how they are congruent. So, they are congruent because they have the same size and shape. How important that their wings are congruent? Do you think the butterfly could fly? Next, which pairs of figures are congruent by inspection? First, we have A and H. Next, B and O, C and P, F and L. And for the last, G and I. In geometry, two figures or objects are congruent if they have the same shape and size, or if one has the same shape and size as the mirror image of the other. It is denoted by the symbol. The top part of the symbol is the sign for similarity and indicates the same shape. The bottom part symbol is the sign for equality and indicates the same size. Now look at the figures that we have here. Can you see how the idea of congruence is used in the mass production of various products? The idea of congruence always helps to recognize congruent figures in the same orientation. When two figures are congruent, you may slide, flip, or rotate the figures until they overlap exactly. Now, let's have the property of congruence. The properties of equality as well as the properties of congruence that follow from them are often used in doing formal geometric proof. First, we have the reflexive property of congruence. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Line segment AB is congruent to line segment AB. Second, symmetric property of congruence. If angle A is congruent, congruent to angle B, then angle B is congruent to angle A. If line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD, then line segment CD is congruent to line segment AB. Third, transitive property of congruence. If angle A congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. If line segment AB is congruent to line segment C, CD and line segment CD is congruent to line segment EF, then line segment AB is congruent to line segment EF. Now, let's identify the properties and definition of terms that can justify each of the following statements based on the given facts. Given, A is the midpoint of line segment MT. Line segment AT is congruent to line segment TH. So, we have the given line segment MT. First, let's define the midpoint. Midpoint is a point that divides the segment into two congruent parts. So, we have point a and point A is the midpoint of line segment MT. Next, line segment AT is congruent to line segment TH. Now, let's use the two column form. The first column are the statements and the second column are the reasons. For number one, we have line segment MA is congruent to line segment AT. The reason is definition of midpoint because the midpoint is a point that divides the segment into two congruent parts. For number Number two, we have line segment MA is congruent to line segment MA, and the reason is reflexive property of congruence. For number three, line segment TH is congruent to line segment AT. The reason is symmetric property of congruence. From the given, line segment AT congruent to line segment TH. And for the last, line segment MA is congruent to line segment TH. And the reason is transitive property of congruence from number 1 and number 3. If line segment MA is congruent to line segment AT and line segment TH is congruent to line segment AT, therefore, line segment MA is congruent to line segment TH. 
Now, let's recall the parts of a triangle. In geometry, a triangle is a close two-dimensional shape with three straight sides. It is also a polygon. A triangle has three sides, three vertices, and three angles. A triangle can be named using its vertices. So we have triangle DEF or triangle EFD or triangle FDE or triangle DFE or triangle EDF or triangle FED. And the vertices are point D, point E, and point F. Next, we have the angles. And the angles are angle D a single letter name or it can be named using the three letters and point D is the vertex that must be on the middle or center so we have angle EDF or angle FDE next we have angle E or angle DEF or angle FED and for the last angle F or angle DFE or angle EFD now let's have the sides for the sides we are going to use the two letters which are the two endpoints of the line segment so we have line segment DE or line segment ED and line segment EF or line segment FE and for the last line segment DF or line segment FD now, let us use the correspondence to match up its angles and sides in the table. Correspondence means an attribute of a shape or relation or exact reflection of form. That is, they mirror each other exactly. Now, let's have the two triangles. By flipping one triangle and slide it over the other to show that the two triangles coincide. In writing correspondence statements, match up the vertices correctly to make a correspondence. Now, let's match it. So we have here the given table. On the first column, we have the corresponding angles. On the second column, we have the corresponding sides. And we are going to use the corresponding symbol that reads as corresponds to. First, we have angle C corresponds to angle D. Angle A corresponds to angle O. And angle T corresponds to angle G. Now for the sides, we have line segment CA corresponds to line segment DO. Line segment AT corresponds to line segment segment OG and line segment CT corresponds to line segment DG. So therefore, triangle CAT corresponds to triangle DOG. So we have here what we call the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or CPCTC. Two triangles are congruent if and only if all their corresponding parts are congruent. So we are going to use the congruent symbol that reads as is congruent to. First, we have angle C is congruent to angle D. Given the measure, they are equal. So if angle C is 85 degrees, angle D is also 85 degrees. Next, angle A is congruent to angle O. Given the measure, they are equal. So if angle A is 60 degrees, therefore angle O is also 60 degrees. And for the last, angle T is congruent to angle G. Given the measure, they are equal. So if angle T is 35 degrees, therefore angle G is also 35 degrees. Now let's proceed on the sides. Line segment CA is congruent to line segment DO. Given the measure, they are equal. And we use the congruent markings. So if line segment CA is 5, line segment DO is also 5. Next, we have line segment AT is congruent to line segment OG. We can use the markings and given the measure, they are equal. So if line segment AT is 8, line segment OG is also 8. And for the last, line segment CT is congruent to line segment DG. And we can use 3 lines that denotes that they are congruent. And given the measure, they are equal. So if line segment CT is 10, line segment DG is also 10. So we can say that triangle CAT is congruent to triangle DOG. Now take note, in right Writing the conclusion, it should be using their corresponding vertices. Point C corresponds to point D, point A corresponds to point O, and point T corresponds to point G. So if your answer is triangle CAT congruent to triangle GOD, that is considered incorrect. 
Now, let's do more. Given triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF, complete each statement from the two congruent triangles. For number 1, angle C is congruent to angle F. As you can see, we use three arcs for congruent markings. For number 2, angle D is congruent to angle A. Angle D has two arcs. Angle A has also two arcs that denotes that they are congruent. For number 3, angle Angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF or angle E. That consists one arc for congruent marking. And for number 4, line segment AC is congruent to line segment DF. Now take note, point A corresponds to point D and point C corresponds to point F. And it should be line segment DF. And we use two lines that indicates that they are congruent. For number 5, line segment ED is congruent to line segment BA. So point E corresponds to point B and point D corresponds to point A. So it should be line segment BA. And they used one line that indicates that they are congruent. For number 6, line segment BC is congruent to line segment EF. So line segment BC has three lines and line segment EF has also three lines. So they are congruent. And for number 7, triangle CAB is congruent to triangle FDE. So point C corresponds to point F, point A corresponds to point D, and point B corresponds to point E. And for the last, triangle FED is congruent to triangle CBA. So point F corresponds to point C, point E corresponds to point B, and point D corresponds to point A. So take note, we are going to arrange the name of the triangle according to its corresponding vertices. Thanks for watching. Please like and share. And don't forget to subscribe on my channel and click the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I'm going to upload a new one. Maraming salamat!